So today I have another John Deere sleeve hitch tool assembly video for you in just a basic overview. This is part number, I'm guessing CC560. This is the Brindley uh, sleeve hitch cultivator. So uh, I am going to change the camera around. Uh, we'll get this thing opened up and uh, see what we're getting into. Now, when I ordered this tool, uh, it was originally because I was going to cut a garden plot in the yard and do a garden this year. Uh, that ended up not happening for a few different reasons. Um, so I didn't actually end up opening this, um, but I'm going to do that now. I'm doing a little bit of work for one of my friends, and I think this is going to help get a little bit of weeding done um, it's a lot of like fern like uh, vegetation growing up in some gravel so I'm hoping that this will be enough to just kind of loosen up the gravel and uh, make it a little easier and possibly easy enough to just rake up all the uh, all the vegetation so looks like you got seven of these tines seem to be good construction pretty thick Slightly springy, um, nothing, nothing crazy to talk about here. Owner's manual, you can see this is what it looks like. This is gonna be your sleeve hitch attachment point. This is going to be the tow bar that I would imagine this hooks to somehow. Bag of hardware, another bag of hardware. Some sort of, this is probably to uh, fasten a weight to a cinder block. Hopefully I'll be able to find a way I can hook a John Deere uh, suitcase weight to it. These are your pieces for, um, I wouldn't call them stabilizers, but basically they go on the back of it just so that these don't dig in the ground too far because the point of this is just to kind of break up soil to keep weeds from gaining root. So you don't want it to dig in like you would, you know, a deep plow or something like that. And then just some other various pieces. All this seems nice and thick. That's a nice thick piece of angle iron. Heavy piece of plate there. And then another thick piece of angle iron. So overall first impression, um, this seems you know fairly heavy duty. I mean, for what it's supposed to do, it doesn't really need to be super heavy. Um, this tool, I think it says 49 pounds on the box. So it's not overly heavy, not like the box scraper um, or some of the other tools, uh, but it does look like it's going to be a good quality build. All right, tool wise, not looking too crazy. Um, we're going to be using a 3 8 inch ratchet with an 11 16 socket and a 3 quarter inch socket. And then of course, I just grabbed a uh, set of wrenches to match so uh, don't quite know that we'll be using the 11 16 wrench but I grab one just to have it out here in case and then I have an extension just if needed so that seems to be all that you really need tool wise for this build uh, if anything else comes up we'll get into that but as far as what it looks for now that's it and it also looks like we need a 9 16 socket says the instructions i didn't really see anything that looked like it would require that except well i guess maybe these nuts didn't see that at first all right we'll get into it so to start out step 1a loosely assemble hitch bracket to pull bar using plow bolts 7 16th inch lock washers and 17 7 16th inch nuts as shown do not tighten so these are the pieces we're going to be assembling. These are the plow bolts, the nut, and the washer. 
there is a note in here it's important to orient these the way shown so you got to go from this direction and it looks like that's going to be because you can change the angle at which the cultivator sits or it's at least supposed to be loose so it can go up and down we'll find that out in the end i'm sure and that's step one step 1b is going to be assemble a tie strap to the pull bar using one half by one and a half inch bolt uh one half inch lock washer and one half inch nut so this is the strap and then you have the nut the bolt and the lock washer for it so this guy is going to go under here and then it is showing that the bolt going from the top And then we'll put these pieces on from the bottom. Doesn't say not to tighten this one. So we're going to tighten it. So we'll be using the three quarter inch tools for this step. There we have it. Step 2A is assemble frame angles to tie strap using basically the same setup as last time. The half inch bolt, half inch lock washer, and half inch nut. It says snug but do not tighten at this time. So this is your hardware. This is the angle. I have one of them here. I'm going to do this one on camera. Just know obviously you have to do the other one. That is one side, of course, repeat for the other. Step 3A is to assemble tie bars to frame angles using, there again, the same bolt setup. Uh, so these, you can probably do them a couple different ways. Each of these uh, tie assemblies are the same. They have the same bend to them. One isn't more than the other. So the way it shows is to put them on top like that. Um, with that, you're going to have a very uneven, you know, difference at the ends where it mounts to the angles. So you also could put one on top and then one on the bottom, and that would make it a little bit more even out at the edges. So if that's something that would bother you, uh, you can do that. Um, the only thing though, is if you plan on using all seven of the, uh, spring plows, whatever they call them can't remember what they called them in here but uh that would go on that center one so that you know center tine would dig down you know probably quarter inch i would imagine that is about a quarter inch deeper if that's a problem cool if not all right so i'm gonna put them on probably this way just because i think it, it's gonna be a little bit better set up uh, but anyway this is the hardware you're gonna use the one longer bolt and then the same bolt setup for everything else basically um, I'm also going to do step 3b and 3c which is assemble the tie bars to pull bar using there again that same bolt but the longer one lock washer and half inch nut and then 3c is tighten all hardware uh, from step 2a which is these two bolts so i think oh one other thing i wanted to point out the instructions are showing that these mount to the angle uh, on the sixth hole in so you'll have five holes past where this mounts up to so let's get it done And there we have it, all of figure three done and everything's tightened up. 
So figure four is going to be assembling the spring shank assembly. Uh, we have step 4A and 4B. Uh, 4B is the one that talks about putting the extra shank on this bolt um, if you want the center one. Um, I'm going to do just the outside ones for now at the end. Maybe I'll throw that center one on just to show what it looks like. But I'm just going to put one on in, one shank on for this uh, video. Um, this is your hardware. You can see we're going to be using the same bolt set up there again. And then these giant spacers. So we're just going to put them on where it shows. So it's showing one in this hole. And then every three holes. So here, here. And here. Let's get to it. And that is essentially it for uh, assembling the spring shank. Uh, of course, you're gonna wanna probably get these going real fast and possibly forget that spacer. I did, um, so I had to throw that back in there. Um, and then of course, you wanna make sure that these are gonna be parallel with the tow bar here before you tighten it all the way down. So at this point, you just repeat it the rest of the way and uh, You'll have all your spring shanks on. So I'm going to finish that up and then we'll move to the next step. So there it is with all the spring shanks on. Um, overall, not too bad. Um, I did find myself forgetting to add those uh, thick spacers most of the time. Uh, so I had to end up taking the bolt back off and put those on. Um, and then I did put the center one on. I don't know how well you can see it back in here but i did put that shank on also uh, for the center um, i was not able however to put this spacer on that one uh, the bolt was just not long enough i couldn't i couldn't get any threads once you got the lock washer in place so i left that out it's basically it's still at the same height of all the others they're all sitting there all just touching the ground so Everything's pretty level. I'm not really too worried about having that spacer in there. So next is going to be step five. Uh, it's going to be 5A, and that's going to be assembling the gauge shoes. Those are the pieces that go on the back uh, to keep the back end from digging down uh, too deep. It basically makes it so that these just graze the top, you know, a layer of dirt or whatever, and don't dig down too much past that. So we're gonna assemble one of the gauge shoe halves to frame angle using one half by one and a half inch bolts, uh, half inch lock washer and half inch nut. Uh, note slot orientation and illustration. So basically, if you look at these, one's elongated, one's just a hole. Uh, the elongated portion when mounting to the frame it's going to go this way so the elongated portion down um, and that'll give you your adjustment with the other one depending on how deep you want this thing to be able to go so i'm going to get this out of the way and then i'm going to uh, show you the assembly of that gauge shoe all right so for the gauge shoe uh this is your hardware of course your similar setup as everything else to attach it to the angle frame. I'm not going to show that now, I'm just going to show assembling these two pieces. Now there are four of these included in the kit, basically, you know, they're the same exact piece uh, and just to save money they just, you know, send a bunch of them ra rather than manufacturing one like without a hole for the bottom or whatever. So uh, anyway, I'm going to be using the carriage bolts that are supplied, the smaller 7 16 nut. Uh, 17.6 lock washer and flat washer. Now the illustration shows 
this going through here and then it shows the lock washer and then a flat washer i don't like that so i'm gonna go flat washer first then lock washer do what you want i would just rather have a flat washer against sound material and then put a lock washer on top of a flat washer but that's just me do what you want so tighten that down and essentially that is your gauge shoe now since those are slotted you have adjustment to change the height depending on how far you want the cultivator to go into the ground but that's something that you'll you know adjust once the thing's on the tractor and once you're actually cultivating whatever ground or doing whatever you're doing with this thing so that is it basically for step five other than assembling it to the cultivator which hopefully i don't have to show that it goes in the back holes with the same setup you've been using before um i'm not gonna bother throwing it on or showing it um i don't really see any value in that um but that is about it for the assembly and here is the assembled product uh overall i gotta say this is probably the easiest uh, most stress-free build uh, of all the different tools that I've built now uh, for the garden tractor. Um, you know, it's it's pretty basic. Everything worked. The instructions are really clear. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of steps or a whole lot of parts, so I think that plays into it. But uh, all the holes lined up. I, you know, I didn't have to do any pounding or hammering or drilling or anything crazy. So uh, I'm pretty pretty happy there. Uh, this didn't take too long to build. I mean, it did because I'm making a video. But other than that, it was pretty quick. So, uh, yeah. Build quality seems great, though. The thing's heavy. Um, if you just have, you know, basic cultivating to remove weeds or whatever, um, this is, you know, probably going to be enough weight. I don't know why you really need to add too much weight. I'll see. Maybe we will. But uh, I think it'll be all right how it is. You know, right around 50 pounds. It's got some weight to it, so... I think it'll be good but uh stay tuned i uh, will have uh, some footage if it's good and if it works um you know of me uh using this thing so i'm pretty excited i'm glad i actually have a chance to use it now it's not just going to be sitting in a box so uh yeah all in all pretty happy with it so far hopefully you know if you had any issue or question or we're just you know wanting to see this thing um, see how it's made, what it's made of, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully this did it for you. So, uh, with that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.